Let Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell you and I goal setting from an authentic hadith. One time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he visited an Arabi, a villager. فأكرمه, that villager, he honored the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meaning honored the guest. When the setting was very much done, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells that villager, ائتنا. Next time you come to my place, Allahu Akbar. Number one, the Prophet's humbleness in going to a villager. MashaAllah, tabarakallah, if we say this community or other community is above, you know, average or middle class, whatever you want to call it, someone from a lower class city invites you, you don't say, no, just come to my place. It's bigger, it's better, it's nicer. Sometimes honor that guest and you go to their place. It will make them happy, inshaAllah. And may Allah grant you Jannah as well. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes to that villager. He honored him. And then he says, now you come to my place next time. And this is something we learn from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If someone does good to you, reciprocate, return it back. You know, many of our mothers, may Allah grant them Jannah, Ya Rab, they have the habit when they receive a plate from the neighbor with food, they never return the plate empty. Like, mom, what do you do this? Just return the plate, we washed it. No, I have to give back, subhanAllah. This is from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I invite you for lunch one day, next time you invite me for lunch. But what if I cannot do what you did to me? It, it may happen. We will never be able to pay back our parents, for example. There's nothing you can do, I promise, inshallah, nothing. Except in one case for your dad. If your dad was taken as a hostage, a prisoner of war as a slave and you bought his freedom. That's the only possible way you broke even with your dad. With your mom, impossible. So what do I do? Fad'u lahu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, make dua for that person until you feel you are even. Subhanallah. So next time you come over. So that villager indeed, I don't know how long, day or two or a week, eventually he comes and visits the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When that setting was also about to end, you know, the eight or so, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told that villager, and here is the main point of the khutbah, inshaAllah. He tells him, sell, make a wish. Allahu Akbar. Ask anything. What's your dream? What's your goal? What's your wish? Ask. And imagine this opportunity. So this Arabi thinks and thinks, and he's like, I know what I want. Naqa. And ahli. I want a camel, a, nar, a large camel that is pregnant. And a lot of goat, so also my family can milk. And that was a very prestigious, very rich thing at that time. Very, uh, people of wealth have this, like a very fancy car, fancy house. That's pretty much what he kind of asked for. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, anything else? Then he added, if I'm not mistaken, the a'nuzun, the goats, the, uh, that's exactly what I want. So then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is using a teaching moment. And he tells the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, أَعَجِسْتُمْ أَن تَكُونُ مِثْلَ عَجُوزِ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ Were you guys not able to be like that fantastic old lady from the children of Israel? So the Sahaba, what did they say? And who is the old lady from the children of Bani Israel? Then he says the story. He said when Musa alayhi salam, about three some thousand years ago, Musa alayhi salam is about to leave Egypt to escape and run for his life along with Bani Israel in the hundreds of thousands. They left during the night time. الطريق, they lost their way. It became so dark they can't see nowhere, they don't know where to go. فَقَالَ Musa, Musa said, ma هَذَا What's going on? Fir'aun, it's a matter of time till he knows Musa's running away with Bani Israel. So we may get captured. Ma hadha, what's going on? Faqala ulama'uhum, the scholars of Bani Israel said, when Yusuf alayhi salam, that's about 400 years approximately before this moment, when Yusuf alayhi salam was about to die, ahi akhada min indillahi mawthiqa, or min indillahi mawthiqa. He took a promise from us, that if you, Bani Israel, would to ever leave Egypt, take my body with you. If you guys ever leave Egypt, take my body with you. So the scholars of Bani Israel knew that, but maybe hastiness, they want to run away from Pharaoh, whatever the case is. 
So right when Musa alayhi salam, he heard that, he said, Aina qabr, where's the grave of Yusuf? They said, there's only one person that knows. From the hundreds of thousands of Bani Israel, one person. Who is that person? The old lady from Bani Israel. Bring her. So she comes to Musa alayhi salam. So Musa alayhi salam tells her, I want from you to direct us to the grave of Yusuf alayhi salam. She said, La wallah, hatta tu'atiyani su'li. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. I will give you what you want, but you give me what I want. Allahu Akbar. This is speaking to Musa alayhi salam. Respectfully. You give me what I want, I will tell you where the grave is at. Wama su'luki, wama hukmuki, and what is it that you want? She said, my goal. And here the whole story, the Prophet is saying because of this sentence. She tells Musa alayhi salam, my goal, my wish, my dream, murafaqatuka fil jannah, to be with you in jannah, ya Musa. I want to be your neighbor in jannah, because that's the highest you can ever achieve. May Allah make you all neighbors to the prophets in jannah. That's the elite, there's nothing beyond that. Allah says in the Quran, these are the ones. أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُّنَ أُولَئِكَ رَفِيقًا Allah gives you the four levels. Prophets, truthful, siddiq, martyrs, righteous. And they are great companions. So she aimed for the highest. What did Musa alayhi salam do? فَكَرِهَا أَنْ يُعْطِيَهَا ذَلِكَ He felt uncomfortable telling her, I got you. I will ask Allah for you. He didn't feel comfortable. But why? He didn't feel that she earned it. People give up their lives to attain this level. People donate their wealth and half of it and all of it to attain this level. People save money to perform hajj and do this and do that and sacrifice their day and night for this. And because you want a point of the location of the grave, because of this, which an information, you got without much work because of your old age. Now you want to be the neighbor of the Prophet. He, I'm sure he would love for her to be there. He, he, he loves, but he doesn't feel strong enough to go to Allah. Ya Rabbi ya Allah, please Ya Allah, this lady. There's not that fuel. فَأَوْحَ اللَّهُ إِلَى مُوسَى So Allah revealed to Musa, أَنْ أَعْطِهَا سُؤْلَهَا Tell her her dream will come true. Allahu Akbar. Tell her she deserves it. Ya Allah. On what basis? Because of what she has in her heart that Musa does not know. Only Allah knows the qalb. Allahu Akbar. There's something in this heart of this lady which has been manifested in her wish. She could have asked for anything. A gold as heavy as a cow. She could have asked to be on the first row to escape away from Pharaoh. The least risk involved. She could have asked Musa to ask Allah to prolong her life. All of this she could have. But the true colors of yours and mine shows up in these moments. Her true colors appeared. She has a moment to make an ultimate wish. She said, your neighbor in Jannah. So Allah says she deserves it. That's her heart speaking. Allahu Akbar. So this is a goal setting on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is teaching us. She did everything that she can and that was her capacity. So Musa tells her, Allah gave it to you. You're going to be our neighbor in Jannah, inshaAllah. But let me continue the hadith, the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued the story. When she was given that promise, she told them, let me tell you where the grave is at. She walked and they walked behind her and she pointed to an area with water, ma, whether from rainwater, Allah knows best, like a lake. She said, empty all the water. So they emptied all the water. She said, uhfuru, dig, and they dug. فَوَجَّدُوا عِظَامَ يُوسُفِ The body of Yusuf alayhi salam. فَحَمَلُوهَا Then they grabbed the body and they lifted it and now they're walking with it. But what happened? Allah gave them light as if it was the day. Remember they traveled during the night. وَضَلُّوا الطَّرِيقِ Allah shined light. And subhanAllah, something to appreciate. When you follow the Prophet's commands, Allah puts light in your way. Allah puts light in your heart, in your sight, in your hearing everything. May Allah put barakah in our lives. Don't discredit Musa. Musa is a great leader, but sometimes the fault is not in the leadership. It's in the followers. Musa was great, but the ulama, they know that they need to bring the grave and dig it, but they didn't, subhanAllah. So learn this goal setting from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
aim high, keep your eyes on the prize, which is Jannah. May Allah grant it to all of you. I say what I said, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. So seek Allah's forgiveness, He is the most forgiving. This wonderful old lady from Bani Israel showed you and I what high ambitions look like. But this is not something 3,000 years ago, but this also Sahaba, and inshallah, during our time as well. One time Rasulullah was speaking to the Sahaba, explaining the gates of Jannah. So he said there's a gate of Jannah for Salah. And there's another gate of Jannah about Sadaqah, charity. And people will be called, oh you who excelled in charity, this gate is for you, what an honor. There's another gate, those who excelled in Salah and Sunnah and voluntary and so on, this gate is for you. And there's another gate called Ar-Rayyan for those who excelled in fasting. What an honor to be called. So at the end of the hadith, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he asks Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He shows you and the Prophet will show you what is it that you should seek? What, how should your ambitions be? Don't be of those that say, if I am protected from Jahannam, wallahi, this is the greatest thing. La. If I just enter Jannah, just one foot in Jannah, that's the loss. What better than that? La, that's not your attitude. So Abu Bakr Siddiq tells Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, is it possible for one person to be called from every gate? <laughs> ya Abu Bakr, come here, Abu Bakr, come here, Abu Bakr, come here, Abu Bakr, come here, Abu Bakr, every gate. Look at his ambition. The Prophet said two things. Naam, yes, it's possible. Wa arju an takuna minum, and you're one of them. This is how we should be. Abu Bakr Siddiq will not give more than Uthman. Abu Bakr Siddiq will not fight better than Khalid. Radiallahu an. Abu Bakr Siddiq may not pray more than Ibn Umar and Abdullah ibn Amr. But he will do everything within his capacity to reach his level of excellence. As a result of that, Allah will reward you for what your heart has and how you manifested. I did everything I can. I reached my own peak, not your peak, not your peak, my peak for you. You're called from every door. May Allah grant it to all of you. Amir Rabbil Alameen.